Welcome. I am Michael Ann Cullen, Director of Alumni Relations and an alum from the class of 1995. It is my honor to welcome you from wherever you are joining us to the 2020 Virtual Reunion Mass. I know that none of us could have imagined that we would be celebrating this way together, but no matter what is happening in the world, one thing will never change. We are women of the Sacred Heart, and the bond that ties us to our Sacred Heart sisters knows no bounds. For now, as we quiet our hearts and minds and come together during these unusual times, we focus on the present and remember the words of St. Rose Philippine Duchenne. Do not look back to the past, nor forward to the future. Claim only the present, for it holds God's will. We look forward to seeing you in person as soon as we are able. Please know that you are in the thoughts and prayers of the entire Stone Ridge community. Please join me in welcoming Father Bill Quigley. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to our celebration of the alumni here at uh, Stone Ridge. Let's pause for a moment and ask the Lord to be with us. And so let's gather our prayers with the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. May the grace and peace of our Lord be with all of you. And with your spirit. As we said in the introduction, I'm sure you did not expect that uh, you'd be celebrating your uh, special occasion here on campus because of the COVID. It's actually online on television. But as we gather, let's call upon God's mercy to be with us, especially for those you know who are in need of God's mercy in a special way. Lord, as we gather this weekend in your name, we ask that your mercy can be with anyone who is still suffering from the COVID, for all the healthcare workers. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, in the gospel, you're calling us to be in love with ourselves, with you, and with our neighbor. Give us the amount of mercy we need so we can do that, and we can do that well. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. And in the first reading, we'll hear that God wants us to be especially attentive to orphans, to widows, people in special need, people who come from outside the country. Lord, give us the mercy so we can respond wholeheartedly. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God then have mercy on us, forgive us any of our sins, bring us to the everlasting life. Amen. So glory to God in the highest, Amen. and on earth, peace to people of good will. sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away from the world, receive our prayer. You are at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, for the Holy Spirit, the glory of God the Father. Amen. And so let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, Increase our faith, hope, and charity. Make us love what you have commanded, so that we may merit what you have promised. And we ask this then through Christ our Lord. A reading from the book of Exodus. Thus says the Lord, you shall not molest or oppress an alien, for you were once aliens yourselves in the land of Egypt. You shall not wrong any widow or orphan. If ever you wrong them and they cry out to me, I will surely hear their cry. My wrath will flare up and I will kill you with the sword. Then your own wives will be widows and your children orphans. If you lend money to one of your poor neighbors among my people, you shall not act like an extortioner toward him by demanding interest from him. If you take your neighbor's cloak as a pledge, you shall return it to him before sunset. For this cloak of his is the only covering he has for his body. What else has he to sleep in? If he cries out to me, I will hear him, for I am compassionate. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The response will be, I love you, Lord, my strength. I love you, Lord, my strength. I love you, O Lord, my strength. O Lord, my rock, my fortress, my deliverer. I love you, Lord, my strength. My God, my rock of refuge, my shield, the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. Praise be the Lord, I exclaim, and I am safe from my enemies. I love you, Lord, my strength. The Lord lives 
and blessed be my rock, extolled be, my, be God my savior. You who gave great victories to your king and showed kindness to your anointed. I love you, Lord, my strength. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. Brothers and sisters, you know what sort of people we were among you for your sake. And you become imitators of us and of the Lord, receiving the word in great affliction with joy from the Holy Spirit, so that you become a model for all of the believers in Macedonia and in Achaia. For from you the word of the Lord has sounded forth, not only in Macedonia and in Achaia, but in every place your faith in God has gone forth, so that we have no need to say anything. For they themselves openly declare about us what sort of reception we had among you, and how you turned to God from idols to serve the living and true God and to await his Son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, Jesus, who delivers us from the coming wrath. The word of the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Whoever loves me will keep my word, says the Lord, and my Father will love them and will come to them. Alleluia. And so the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. It's a reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. Well, when the Pharisees heard that Jesus had silenced the Sadducees, they gathered together. One of them, a scholar of the law, asked Jesus a question to test him. Teacher, which of the commandments is, of the law is the greatest? Jesus said to him that you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. This is the greatest and the first commandment. And the second is like it, that you shall love your neighbor as yourself. The whole law and the prophets depend upon these two commandments. The Gospel of the Lord. Uh, back when I was in third grade, I went to public school. And because of going to public school, I had to go to CCD classes on like a Tuesday or a Wednesday afternoon. And it was the Sisters of Mercy who were in the parish. And so one day we get to class and sister says, we're gonna have a test. And I remember one of the questions on the test was, how many commandments are there? So I remember thinking, well, Moses had 10 commandments and then the two commandments from this afternoon's gospel and 10 plus two is 12. So on my test, I put down 12. Well, the following week when we had CCD again, we got our exams back. And sister put this big red X through my 12 and she wrote 10. And I raised my hand and I said, sister, but there's 12 commandments. And she said, no, Billy, there's 10. God gave Moses 10. And I said, but there's these other two commandments that Jesus talks about and 10 and two is 12. She went back off. Well, I would love to run into the sister again today, you know, and see if she would change her mind. But you know, back in those days, you didn't dialogue with the sisters. So I belong to the community Mission Hurst, and I had meetings with other missionary congregations at Mary Knoll up in New York. And the whole idea of the workshop was to go over the different techniques and the ways of doing mission work at that time. So there were about 20, 35 to 38 of us who were participants. And every day we had different activities. So we were brought into a room where we were gathered together and 20 people were asked to sit in a, in a square and then the rest of us, the group, sat outside the square. As we began the, uh, this little workshop, we noticed that in the middle of the square was a basket full of large rolls of colored cloth. There was reds and yellows, there was greens, there were blacks, there were whites. There were five reds, five yellows, five greens, so five of each of the colors. Then we were asked to count off, one to 20. So one to five, six to 10, all the way around. And then we were told that one will pair off with number 20, number two pairs off with number 19, number three pairs off with number 18, and so and so. So after everybody knew who their partner across the square was, number one was asked to go to the basket and pick out the red roll. After the person picked out the roll, go over to the number 19, give them a piece of that cloth, and then walk back to your place. Hold the cloth going across the square. 
Number two then was asked to go to number 19 and pick up the next color cloth, the yellow one. So they brought that over. And so this went back and forth until all the cloths were used and all the numbers were used. As the cloths were taken across from 1 to 20 and 2 to 19, and then as we got to 6 to 15, and going that way, the colors went this way and that way. And because of the different colors that were there, they had to be woven in between. And after it all got together, we were asked, well, what do you see here with these multicolors and the way this web has been come together? And isn't that an image of the church? Now, another part of the story was this. As you took your color and you gave it to your partner and you took it back to your place, you wove it through the other colors that were already there, you were asked to tell a story about your mission experience, whether it's in this country or it was in another country. And so part of the storytelling was first by a sister originally from Ireland, a Holy Spirit sister that their headquarters are in San Antonio, Texas. And she told the story that uh, when she was in the Mississippi Delta, there was a young little kid that would often sit on the steps of the back porch. So one day she noticed this Carl Fisher was sitting there. And she says, Carl, can I help you? And with his Mississippi Delta accent, he said, Sister, we all can smell that you've been cooking cookies today and we were wondering if you'd be sharing them with the rest of us. <laughs> now, eventually, many years later, while I was in the seminary in Washington, Carl Fisher happened to be in the seminary in Washington with the Josephites. And eventually he became an auxiliary bishop uh, in Los Angeles. Unfortunately, in his late 40s, he died of cancer. Another person got up, and as they took their color and wove it back across, it was an African-American priest. And the story he told was this. When we all went into the chapel this morning for morning prayer, I noticed there was a little plaque on the altar. And it said, the marble from this altar comes from Africa. And he said it touched him in a way that he too's ancestors come from Africa. And so he leaned over and kissed the marble since they both have a common background. So that was the story he told. The gospel today tells us, love God with all your heart, mind, and soul, and love your neighbor as yourself. Not always easy, especially with next week's elections. We know some neighbors aren't speaking to one another these days. But here we have the situation, both in the first reading and in the gospel, is asking us, who are you as God's people, and how do you respect others, especially those who are disadvantaged? The lawyer asked Jesus, what's the commandment? And he said, the first one is this, love God with your whole heart, your whole mind, all your attitudes and all your values, and then take that too and apply it to your neighbor. And that is backed up by the first reading. So as we celebrate who you were as you came to this campus once upon a time, and as you got your education here and then you moved on for college and then you moved on for your careers, you moved on to your families, how much of the roots from here are still sacred to you? And obviously they are or you wouldn't be part of today's mass. And so pause for a moment. Who is one of your favorite teachers here on campus? One of your favorite Sacred Heart sisters? Ask God to bless them in a very special way. And then whatever it is that echoes in your heart from your time here, allow it to reverberate to the people who are around you, who are dear to you. Amen? So how about now if we profess our faith? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, all these things I suppose. I believe in the Holy Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God. Lord and Father, for all ages, God from God, life from life, true God from true God, begotten, not made, substantial with the Father. For there are all things were made for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit, was born of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death, and was buried. And the third again of our Lord of day, from the scriptures, he ascended into heaven, sitting at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. And so even the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, 
with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, and he has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and the glory of the resurrection of the dead, and the life of the world to come. Amen. And so let's pause for a moment so we can place our intercessions then before the Lord. Our response is, loving God, hear our prayer. Loving God, hear our prayer. For people of faith everywhere, that the Spirit of God will renew our hope and guide us to make the love of God visible in the world. Let us pray to the Lord. Loving God, hear our prayer. For world leaders, that they may practice effective diplomacy to solve conflicts and tensions and make wise decisions to protect the health and well-being of all people. We pray to the Lord. Loving God, hear our prayer. For all alumni of our Stone Ridge community and their families, let us pray to the Lord. Loving God, hear our prayer. For the religious of the Sacred Heart, associates, and the network of Sacred Heart schools, that the Holy Spirit will guide them as we continue the work they begun by St. Madeline Sophie. Let us pray to the Lord. Loving God, hear our prayer. For those who are experiencing poverty and homelessness, and for victims of natural disasters, that the Spirit may inspire us to action for healing and justice, we pray to the Lord. Loving God, hear our prayer. That all who serve the cause of peace across the globe return home safely to their families, let us pray to the Lord. Loving God, hear our prayer. For those suffering from COVID and all those who suffer from any illness, disability, injury, or addiction, that they find comfort and healing through compassionate caregivers, let us pray to the Lord. Loving God, hear our prayer. For all those who have died and for those who mourn, that they find solace in God's promise of eternal life. In particular, we remember the alumni who have gone before us and all deceased members of the Society of the Sacred Heart. Let us pray to the Lord. Loving God, hear our prayer. For the intentions we hold in the silence of our hearts, let us pray to the Lord. Loving God, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we ask you to gather all these intercessions, our prayers, our concerns, in order that you may bless them. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. So blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which the earth has given human hands and made. Let it become for us the bread of life. And blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine, work of human hands. Let it become for us our spiritual drink. So let's pray that my sacrifice and yours is acceptable to God, the Father, the Almighty. Look as we pray, O Lord, upon these offerings of bread and wine, that we make to your majesty, that whatever is done by us in your service may be directed above all to your glory. And so we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. So the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Well, let's give thanks then to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just. It's our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Father most holy, through your beloved Son, Jesus our Christ, your word from whom you made all things, whom you sent as Savior and Redeemer, incarnate of the Holy Spirit and born of Mary. Fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people, he stretched out his hands as he endured his passion so as to reconcile us as he manifested the re re resurrection. And so with all your saints and angels in heaven, we too want to declare your glory as with one voice we declare, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, 
heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, a font of all holiness. Make holy therefore these gifts, we pray, that by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time that Jesus was betrayed, and willingly into his passion, he took bread. Giving thanks, he broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. This is my body, which is given up for you. In a similar way, when the supper was ended, Jesus took the chalice, once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the noon and everlasting covenant. It will be shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Our mystery of faith, when we eat, this bread and drink this cup. We proclaim your death, O oh Lord. Come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life, the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and administer to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring it to that fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, with Gregory, our Bishop, for all the clergy and religious. Uh, remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, especially the alumni of Stone Ridge, all the Sacred Heart Sisters. We ask that you welcome them into the light of your face. Then have mercy on us all, with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, and Blessed Joseph, her spouse, blessed apostles, all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, that we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. For it's through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. As we celebrate the alumni mass, let's remember the faculty and the staff <clears throat> of the time that you were here, your fellow students at the time you were here, and those that you still have a relationship in these many years later. And so let's pray together in the words our Lord gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. And will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that with the help of your mercy, we can always be free from sin, safe from all distress, as we wait in blessed hope for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus, you said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Well, don't look on our sins. Look on the faith of your church. And then graciously granted peace and unity throughout the world. And we ask this then through Christ our Lord. Amen. So may the peace of the Lord be with all of you. And with your spirit. The Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. And so behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world, and blessed those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. And the body and blood of Christ bring us all to an everlasting life.
in a good old Catholic church, are there any announcements? And so let us pray. May the sacraments we have shared together, O Lord, perfect in us what lies within them. And in what we now celebrate in signs may one day possess in truth. And we ask this then through Christ our Lord. Amen. And so the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May God bless you and all your families, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Our Mass is in. Let's go and celebrate the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God. Happy Alumni Day. Thank you.